Um, botanists these days, do they have the same freedom as Pocock had to collect plants from the wild? Uh, absolutely not. Um, in an international context, the museum and any other responsible organisation employs botanists and other natural historians collecting things have international obligations. Many countries now have very, very stringent permits around collecting in their country. They will have uh, requirements relating to what we call the CBD or the Convention for, oh, I forgot to say, the Convention on Biodiversity, I can remember all this. Uh, and another theme, which an idea which is called access and benefit sharing. So if we go into another country and collect some material, we have to ensure that, that we not only follow the country's national permits and regulations and requirements and their laws, but this international concept of access and benefit sharing, that we ensure that any information we may gain from it is equally and fairly shared with, with the donor country, yes. or donor community for that matter. It's a very complex piece of international uh, law. But, but on a more local framework, certainly in the UK, Again, we follow UK national law and best practice. Blithely going out and collecting a hundred rare orchids mm. is no longer legal mm. in many circumstances mm. and it is no longer culturally acceptable even within our community. Um, although there is always the odd slightly in a, like, unpleasant renegade with these matters, particularly with things like orchids. Um, and often as not, it is not necessary. There are many ways to document wild plants um, and collecting can be done, done through photography, taking a leaf, for example, a DNA sample if that's needed. So collecting is a considered in a different way these days. It's what is your objective, why are you collecting, and are you affecting the wild populations? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but there are there is definitely paperwork to be filled in if you're collecting a rare plant or on a protected site. Yes. So triple SIs, for example, sites of special scientific sites of special scientific interest, such as chalk downlands, a few main ones, you have to have specific permission to collect on. Yes. Even if the plant is as common as a lawn daisy. Mm. As we're hoping with the project to produce something that will be useful in schools. Yeah. So advice for yeah. young people is not to not to collect plants from the wild. Um, there's been a general over say the last fifty years that don't don't collect wild plants, mm -hmm. don't collect wild insects, etc., etc. And I think the overall precautionary principle of if you don't know what the thing is or you're not sure, you, you shouldn't. If you have a reasonable understanding of what the object is and that it's not covered by laws, regulations, or it's rare anyway, collecting, if you understand the basic principles of how to collect the object, can enrich your, your own personal life by helping you understand this organism. Um, but ultimately, if your collections are made well, they can be deposited with a regional or national collection uh, when you choose to or upon your demise. Mm. Um, and they are a valuable thing. We still make collections of common widespread things. So it's, as ever with biology, it's a slightly multi-layered collection. Going out and ripping orchids out of the field and making your own private collection is, is just because you want to kind of almost stamp collect the objects is mm. probably not, well, it's definitely not a good idea. But it, there are always, sometimes rather overstretched, experts who can help you with that and make you make good decisions about that. But collecting is still important. Right.